After being in prison in Mexico, I, I learned that in order for me to survive, I needed to be more efficient in everything. It, it, it was like life or death. I had to, I had to survive. I had to fight every day to stay alive in the system, whether it was a Mexican prison or you know, the U.S. It was gonna be a long run because in my head, that's where I was gonna be for a minute. That was gonna be my life. So I had to be more efficient. War. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should've seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling, six times failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to get back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never. What's up guys, my name is JC, I am Wrong the Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, mi familia, mi raza, you already know what time it is. Soon tell us about it, because we're about to go see Jesus. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Wrong the Strong. It's all in his name, all in his glory. Thank you Jesus for what you did on the cross for me, thank you. You know, after Mexico, talk about like PTSD and like hyper <laughs> sensitive to noise and everything. I was, I was now in the U.S. and I had to be more efficient. <laughs> you know, no more pretty boy, no more weekly haircuts, no more gold chains, no more new clothes, no more new shoes, nothing. I had to be efficient. I wasn't gonna get visits. In 17 years, I could count in both hands uh, who visit me, and, and I mean, I remember every single visit because I, I didn't get them. My stepmom, my mom in Mexico, uh, Leah, my dad, my grandfather before he passed, and my grandma, and one of the girls from the neighborhood. <laughs> but I very rarely got visits, so I, I was prepared for that in my mind. I wasn't gonna get no money. Get that out of your guys' heads. If you think that your gang is gonna send you money if you're in there, it's all a lie. Nobody sends you nothing. As soon as you're gone, everybody forgets about you and everybody goes on with their life. So so I needed to get ready for this, this kind of war. I, I said to myself, because you know, my whole life I had survived just kind of by myself, really, just kind of chameleon in, chameleon out of places. I have to try and stay alive every day. Efficient. I had to be efficient at staying alive. I always had my boots on. Everybody would make fun of me, you know, dresser, <laughs> but I didn't dress for looks. My prison boots were very effective. <laughs> they they were steel toe. You know, you could yeah, you would use them for work and use them as a weapon, and you could run in them. You could you do a lot of things with them. You go into the shower with them. You take showers with them. You know, a lot of people would cry about how uncomfortable they were, but I always went for the old ones that were already broken in. Even though they were ugly, they were comfortable, and I, I could get down with them. I could fight, I could run, I could work out, go to work, and, and that was it, you know? So that's, I had to be more efficient in the choices that I made more efficient in how I lived, more efficient in how I was spending money. I ran with them, I walked with them. I mean, like I said, no visits. That means no need for nothing new. I, I don't need to buy nothing new, nothing. Every day could be the same thing that I'm wearing. Khaki pants, they're thick. I used to like to wear them, the boots. 
a white shirt and a sweater. Then the sweater was usually just in case you had to roll it up in your hand to kind of fight people off. <laughs> you know, but the sweater was, it was just key. Like that's, that's what you wore every day, the same thing. No money, you know, that meant that I had to get a job and get a side hustle to survive in there. I mean, staying busy is really the key in there for your, your, your war that you're gonna have in your head. The workouts, the workouts were mandatory. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. It was just something that always had to, to be done, and it was always something crazy. 500 Navy SEALs. I mean, 500 Navy SEALs, that's 1,500 push ups. <laughs> My long walks, long talks. Today I know who I was talking to, both. <laughs> But I know now when I was having those heart to hearts who I was talking to. You know, I got I got home with this like this prison mindset, you know, and it did, it did help me at first. It helped me take over gyms, it helped me open up gyms, it helped me make money. I was dating all the hot girls in the gym. Um, or if not, I was sleeping with them. I was I was living my life to the fullest, right? To the fullest. That's what I thought. This is what I was gonna be doing for the rest of my life. So why, why was I so miserable? Why did I feel empty? Why did I feel like this, this hole in my chest that no matter how many girls I slept with, no matter how much money I was making, no matter what I was driving, no matter what drug I took, why was it still there? I mean, I was a good guy now. I wasn't selling drugs. I wasn't trying to kill nobody. I wasn't in a gang. I, I was a good guy, right? But do you see how the rest of the stuff was okay? Like me sleeping around, like me drinking and driving. All that was okay because it's okay in today's world, like it's okay. It's okay to have sex. I mean, how are you not gonna have sex if you're dating somebody, right? And I mean, sex was my one of my biggest sins. But like today, I understand how important it is for a man, a real man of Christ, to respect his body, the temple. Today I feel better in my heart because like I choose not to drink, like I choose not to sell, I choose not to speak with words that will make him, you know, unhappy with me. I have the choice today and I feel better in my heart because I choose to not do them. I choose God and it feels better. I wouldn't be, I'm not selling you nothing, so why would I just, you know, lie to you? But in order to, to love God, we have to know, know Him, like know Him. And that means like spending time with Him, not just praying before you eat or, or praying at the service, no, no, like every day being more efficient at how you love Him and how you pray and talk to Him. When you get to know Him, then you better understand what He wants for you. We show our love for Him by reading the Bible and applying it. We go to church, we pray, we get involved. We live our lives in a way that will honor Him. Are you loving God efficiently? I share my stories and my walk because I am, I'm just very excited about what He's doing in my life. And deep down inside, like, I wish that everybody could feel this way. I, I wish that everybody could just for one second, experience what I'm experiencing. Like, I understand what peace is today. My name is JC, I am Ron Strong. Hey, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, live for him. It's a money back guarantee. I'm, I'm telling you, hey, I'm telling you, listen. Catch you guys.